Hello everyone, I'm Maratra Kabhomek and I welcome you all to another episode of Quotes This Week on Live Law where we update you about all the important legal developments that took place across the country last week. We will begin with developments from the Supreme Court of India and then move on to high courts and other subordinate courts. If you like our content, then it would mean a lot to us if you could please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's begin. The Supreme Court Constitution bench by a 4 is to 1 majority upheld the decision taken by the central government six years ago to demonetize currency notes of Rs 500 and Rs 1000 denominations. The majority held that the center's notification dated November 8, 2016 is valid and satisfies the test of proportionality. Justice B.V. Nagaratna in her dissenting view, however, held that although demonetization was well-intentioned, it has to be declared unlawful on legal grounds and not on the basis of objects. The five-judge bench comprising Justices S. Abdul Nazir, B. R. Gawai, A. S. Bapanna, V. Rama Subramaniam and B. V. Nagaratna was answering a division bench reference. It had resolved its judgment on December 7th last year. The matter has now been sent back to the division bench. In an important ruling, the Supreme Court Constitution bench has held that additional restrictions not found in Article 19 Clause 2 of the Constitution cannot be imposed on the right to free speech under Article 19 Clause 1 Subclause A of Ministers, MPs and MLAs. The Supreme Court Constitution bench comprising Justices S. Abdul Nazir, B. R. Gawai, A. S. Bapanna, V. Ramasubramaniam and B. Vinagaratna held that the grounds mentioned under Article 19 Clause 2 for restricting free speech are exhaustive. In a dissenting opinion, Justice B.V. Nagaratna has, however, observed that in case a minister makes disparaging statements in his official capacity, then such statements can be vicariously attributed to the government. However, if the statements of the ministers are stray remarks, not consistent with the stand of the government, then it would be treated as a personal remark, she clarified further. The Supreme Court bench comprising Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur and Justice P.S. Narasimha has stated that a cinema hall owner could prohibit moviegoers from carrying their own food as well as beverages inside cinema halls. However, the bench clarified that all cinema halls must provide hygienic drinking water for all moviegoers free of cost in theatres. Further, it has noted that when an infant or a child accompanies a parent, reasonable amount of food for them can be carried inside theatres. The issue arose when the Jammu and Kashmir High Court directed owners of cinema halls of the state not to prohibit cinema goers from carrying their own food and water inside the theatre. The Supreme Court was approached against this impugned judgment of the Jammu and Kashmir High Court. The Supreme Court has issued notice on the special leave petition filed by the state of Madhya Pradesh against the High Court restraining the government from taking course of action against any person who contravenes Section 10 of the Madhya Pradesh Freedom of Religion Act 2021, which requires a person desiring to convert his or her religion to give a declaration in this regard to the district magistrate. However, the bench of Justices M.R. Shah and C.T. Ravi Kumar refused to stay the impugned order. Finding this provision to be prima facie unconstitutional, the High Court Division Bench of Justice Sujoy Paul and Justice Prakash Chandra Gupta on November 14, 2022 had directed the state to not prosecute adult citizens if they solemnize their marriage out of their own volition. In a significant development, the Supreme Court of India has stayed the order of the Uttarakhand High Court for the removal of occupants in railway lands in Haldwani, based on which authorities had issued eviction notices to over 4,000 families who claim that they have been residing in the area for years based on valid documents recognized by government authorities. Taking exception to this High Court direction to remove the occupants in seven days, the Supreme Court has observed with dismay that there cannot be uprooting of 50,000 people in seven days. A bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Abhayas Oka, 
passed the order while issuing notice to the state of Uttarakhand and the railways in a batch of special leave petitions filed against the judgment passed by a division bench of the High Court on December 20th last year. The Supreme Court has stayed the Allahabad High Court's direction to the Uttar Pradesh State Election Commission to notify the urban local body polls without OBC reservation. Also to ensure smooth administration in local bodies whose terms have expired, the court allowed the delegation of powers to a three-member body headed by the district magistrate with the condition that no major policy decision should be taken. This order was passed by a bench comprising Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur and Justice P.S. Narasimha in a petition filed by the Uttar Pradesh government against the Allahabad High Court's decision asking the state to conduct urban local body polls without OBC reservations. The Supreme Court has transferred to itself the batch of petitions seeking recognition of same-sex marriage in India. The matter was listed before a bench comprising Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, Justice P.S. Narasimha and Justice J.B. Pardewala. The bench also provided liberty to petitioners to appear on virtual platform and advance their submission in case they are unable to engage a council or travel to Delhi. These batch of petitions are now listed for hearing on March 13th. Hinting at a hiatus in the ongoing tussle between the centre and the judiciary over the delay in clearing the names recommended by the Supreme Court Collegium for appointment of judges in the higher judiciary, the centre has assured the Supreme Court that timelines on judicial appointments will be followed and that the pending Collegium recommendations will be cleared very soon. Attorney General for India R. Venkataramani appearing on behalf of the centre has also apprised a bench comprising Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Abhayas Oka that all efforts are being made to confirm to the timelines laid down by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court bench comprising Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachur, Justice P.S. Narasimha and Justice J.B. Pardewala has stayed the order of the Meghalaya High Court which had put an interim stay on the execution of the Assam Meghalaya Border Pact which was entered into between the two states subsequent to the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding last year. Solicitor General of India Tushar Mehta, appearing on behalf of the state of Meghalaya, submitted that the MOU signed by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma and his Meghalaya counterpart Conrad Sangma to resolve the long-standing interstate boundary dispute, particularly in respect of six areas, was a decision taken in the political ticket. Communication between a lawyer and the client are privileged and a lawyer cannot be compelled to confirm such a communication in a trial even if it is already disclosed to the trial court by another party. The Bombay High Court has ruled while setting aside a witness summons to a lawyer. Justice Abhay Ahuja was dealing with a petition challenging a witness summons directing a lawyer to appear before the civil judge senior division Pune in a civil suit. A Delhi court has granted bail to a 25-year-old Kashmir-based photojournalist Mohammad Manandar in a case registered under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, observing that the accusation made by the National Investigation Agency that is the NIA against him does not appear to be cogent and true. Additional Sessions Judge Shailinder Malik observed that the allegation of assisting a proscribed terrorist organization discreetly and ostensibly carrying on legitimate activities like advocate or a journalist must be supported by direct evidence of any such activities. The Delhi High Court has asked the Bar Council of India to submit a further status report on having a preset schedule for conduct of the All India Bar Examination, that is the AIBE. Justice Pratibha M. Singh was apprised by the council appearing for BCI that the AIBE 2023 examination has been scheduled to be held on February 5th this year and the results are expected to be released before April. Thank you 
Keep watching Quotes this week on Live Law for more such updates. See you next week.